Welcome back to the top 100. Uh, today I am going through uh, 100 through 91, so the first true uh, part of the top 100 for 2024. Um, as I said in the last video, which you may or not have watched, the last time I did this was technically 2022. Um, and then before that I did 2020. Um, so I might say last year sometimes, and that's that's not technically true, it's like two years ago, and then two years before that. I'm probably going to start doing it every year from here on. Um, but I will let you know what these games were ranked at the last time and before that. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, thanks for joining. I just noticed now I, I have a uh, something, a little blip in the list that I'm not going to worry about that much. Um, I'll tell you when I get there. Number 100 is Coup. Uh, Coup was 97 last year, 95 the year, or 97 in 2022, uh, 95 the time before that. Um, so hanging on to the end of the list here. Coup is one of my favorite six player games. Six is a, an awkward number of people to play a game with. Um, because you're like, oh, should we break into two groups of three? Um, or, you know, should we, or should we play like a party game? Coup is not really a party game. Coup is a game where you have two of these uh, people with these interesting, like, kind of art, sci-fi-ish sort of stuff. You have two of them in front of you that are going to give you two different abilities. I should say hopefully different abilities, because you could be stuck with, like, two contestants, which would not be good. On your turn, you do one of a bunch of different actions, according to these people. But you have them face down, and you can choose any of the people to take their action. So maybe I have this duke and i'll be like i'm gonna take the ambassador action even though i don't have the ambassador anyone at the table could call me on that call my bluff and then i would have to prove whether or not i have the card um if i do they lose a life if i don't i lose a life so it's a very fun interesting game of bluffing um kind of scratches that social deduction itch without the need to uh kind of get into some of the more negative aspects of social deduction uh, that's a coup. Best at six. It's okay at five. Don't play it any other player card. There's also some other weird expansion that lets you play more. Uh, number 99, Sushi Go Party. Uh, this was 75 last time, 56 the time before that. Uh, falling a little bit. Um, it, this is one of the best games for seven or eight people where they're not all super into board games. Um, it's a drafting game, kind of like a simple Seven Wonders. Um, if you haven't given Sushi Go a try, I highly recommend it. Sushi Go Party is the superior version, plays more people, has more options, kind of lets you customize the way you want to play. Maybe you want to play with something that's a little bit more like high risk, high reward. Maybe you want to play with very simple cards. Um, yeah, works really well as an introductory game. Um, probably works pretty well with kids. Uh, I don't eat sushi, but everyone else gets uh, hungry for sushi when we play this game. Although there are some things in here like the miso soup. Um, and the uh, oh, there's there's some other good cards in here, so I do get hungry when eating this game. Um, great fun little artwork, highly recommend. That is Sushi Go Party. Number 98 is the uh, first and only bag building game on my list, and this is The Quacks of Quedlinburg. It was 90 last time, 59 the time before that. Um, still really love this game, it's just one of those things I haven't been playing as much, and there's a bunch of other uh, games on the list. In the Quacks of Quedlinburg, you're playing as an alchemist who's basically a quack doctor and, you know, coming up with fake remedies. Um, but it's very much a push-your-luck kind of game. So you're drag pulling these chips out of your own little personal bag. You can add other chips into it to make the bag more interesting to, you know, get better chips. Um, but if you get a certain amount of these white chips, then your bag explodes or your potion explodes and you, you don't get as many good things. Um... Definitely a lot of like fun moments of like everyone one two three and a reveal and you're like ah or like yes um, which is really fun a uh, lot of randomness in the game can be a little frustrating sometimes um, works uh, I think it's two to four is what it says for the player count I recommend it with four um, or five if you have the expansion which I do uh, one of the expansions um, speaking of games that play well at eight like Sushi Go Party. <laughs> Number 97 is Shadow Hunters. This was 56 the last time I did the list, 55 the time before that. I don't get to play this game enough because Amy doesn't like it, and that's okay. She doesn't like it. It's not a problem. Um, 
this game is also apparently very out of print um, and worth over $100 if it was in mint condition, which mine is nowhere near that. Um, in this game, you're playing as either a shadow or a hunter or a neutral. Shadows are like vampires, werewolves. Hunters are like vampire hunters. And neutrals could be any number of people. There's like, there's a priest. There's a young girl. There's like some guy who's like probably a serial killer. There's the shadow want to kill the hunters. The hunters want to kill the shadow. The shadow also want to kill the neutrals. The neutrals all have their own win condition. So it gets a little funky. But the play is actually very smooth. Um, there's certainly a lot of uh, luck and randomness in the game. Works well with, I would say, seven or eight, even nine, which is not supported by the actual game itself, but you can just put in a couple of pennies for player markers and it works. Um, because I think it works best when you have three, at least three neutrals. Um, or at least at seven, you have three neutrals. At eight, you have like three shadow, three hunter, two neutrals. It works better with those player counts. Lower player counts, not as much fun. That's uh, that's Shadowhunters. Almost to the next game, which is Project L. This is the first new game on my list. This is '96. Um, Jess taught me this game, and I loved it instantly. Got it soon after that. Um, this is a polyomino game in which you are creating. You're filling in these little puzzles, and so on your turn, you can you get you know a couple of, uh, three actions to do, and you can either draw a new puzzle. Or you can get some of these nice chunky polyomino pieces. Polyomino is like Tetris, basically. Um, and uh, you have to fill them in with the with the uh, pieces, and then you get that number of points, and you get that piece. It's a very simple engine building game in a lot of ways, because it's not even really an engine. But you're trying to maximize your points and minimize your actions. Um, yeah, works really well. It's very satisfying. <laughs> um, very satisfying to be able to fill in those little puzzles and be like, what can I do? Oh, I see what I can do. I can grab this and then move that in here and then do this big action where it puts all these in here and then I'll get all this stuff. Um, plays very quickly. Even a four-player game plays in under an hour, probably 45 minutes. Um, that's Project Down. Number 95, I am not counting as a new game to my list. Um, I also don't own this game, but <laughs> I have Nikki's copy, and I think she forgot that I have it, but here it is. Uh, this is Clank Catacombs. Um, uh, I've had Clank on the list before at 47 last time, 36 the time before that. Um, and yeah, Clank is a great game. Clank Catacombs is my favorite way to play it. What they've changed in the Catacombs version is now you, instead of having a set board, you build the board as you go with these big tiles. Um, which is very fun. Um, they've added some in some other things like prisoners and keys and things like that. But really, this is deck building with a board you're moving around and trying to get points on the board before you die, before the uh, the dragon kills you. A lot of things you do will make clank, which is noise, and then the, you pull these uh, little things out of a bag. So I guess it is a bag builder, kind of like Rex Clever. Um, but it's really more of a deck builder. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you pull out your own, if you pull out your own colored pieces, then you lose health. The dragon's, like, catching up to you. Um, you just gotta try and go down, grab an artifact, get back up, and leave the dungeon before the dragon kills you. Um, a lot of fun. It is, it works well, three or four. Uh, this is from Paul Denon. Um, who's a great designer, and you may, might see one of his games much higher on the list. That's Clint Catacombs. Uh, let's see here. We're moving on to 94, and this is my little blip on the list because I don't know what it was last year. I think I, I put the wrong thing in, but I'm sure it was on the list last time. Uh, it was 68 the first time I did the list back in 2020. This is San Juan, and man, I need to play this game again. I have not played this in forever, but this is... One of my favorite, uh, it's based on Puerto Rico, which you may or may not see higher on the list, but it's one of my favorite I pick you follow games. One player will pick one of these roll cards and then everyone does the action associated with it. The player that picked the card gets a better action. Um, also, this, 
this is an English copy. I don't know why the picture on the back, you probably can't even see these, but the picture on the back has all the cards in German, so that's great. A bibliothek, wait, is that German? Yeah, it is. Right there? Yeah, okay. Um, but also, all of the cards, their cost is up the, at the top, the way you pay for them, is just with other cards in your hand. So you're building up cards in your hand, and you pay them to play a good card down. Um, you can get these uh, different uh, production buildings, which will produce resources, which again are just cards from the top of the deck. So it uses the cards very efficiently, and it's just to pack a ton of gameplay into a very small box. Uh, that is San Juan, my number 94. Number 93 is the first cooperative game on the list. Uh, I am notoriously not a fan of co-ops, uh, but I like them if there is one of two different things. Either very complicated and therefore it's hard to tell what someone else should do, or there's limited information or limited communication so you really like can't ask someone else for advice. <laughs> is that in spades? This is number 93, Magic Maze. It was uh, 100 last year, or last time, and it was not on my list of 50 movies. Magic Maze is a co-op game where you are going through this mall as these fantasy characters. The theme is real weird. Uh, you're going through the mall as these fantasy characters and trying to, like, grab your shopping stuff or, like, steal it, I think, and then leave the mall before the security catches up with you. And most of the game, you are not allowed to talk. Oh my gosh, I need to organize this better. As you can probably tell by the shifting around. But most of the game, you're not allowed to talk. However, um, and each I should plays by far plays best with only four, because each of you controls a direction. And so, if you need to move someone like this way, whoever has the card that moves that way is the only one who can do that. The best thing about this game is this little guy right here. Which, by the way, Scott Nicholson first board game YouTuber, has a video all about this pawn, because this is this is a hysterical game mechanism. Um, you aren't allowed to communicate, you aren't, or you aren't allowed to say words, but the thing you are allowed to do, for most of the game when talking is prohibited, is pick up this guy and put it in front of somebody else. And that tells them you want them to make a move, which is the most passive-aggressive thing I think I've ever seen in board games. Because, you know, you'll be like... And the person will look at the board and be like, and this is all silent. It's fantastic. And then, you know, if you're a jerk like I am, you'll, you'll take up the thing and be like, and then, and then, and then you'll just throw up your hands in the air and, and like try and do something else. Hysterical. Um, works really well. I really want to try this with Amy, Marianne, and Sarah. Um, and I know that they will hate and love it, um, as I do. That's Magic Maze. Great game, number 93. Uh, number 92 is the second deck builder on the list. The first one was Clint Catacombs. Um, 92 is a very weird game. Man, I should have worn the shirt I wore last time I did one of these videos. Fort. Fort is such a weird deck builder. Um, in this game, you are trying to... The theme is great. You're trying to build a fort as a group of neighborhood kids. Um... And you have all of these, you know, friends and other kids that you're playing with and building forts and things like that. This is by later games. The art by Kyle Farron is amazing, as always. Um, and so, like here, for example, this guy, Golden Boy. Um, but so let's say, here, who's someone here? Oh, I love Einstein. Okay. So let's say you have Einstein in your deck, but you don't use him on your turn. You haven't played with him, so he goes out into your yard and other people can play with him and take him into their deck, which is very weird. Um, it has these great tokens. Pizza and toys are the two resources in this game, and you spend them to build up your fort. Um, much more complicated than it looks um, and much in a lot of depth in this game. Um, but, uh, yeah really love it it's it's honestly hard to even recommend this game in a lot of ways um you gotta you gotta get through a lot of rules overhead and a lot of icon soup before you that's just like lots of different icons before you can actually like get to the meat of the game which is very cool um that is for my number 92 
It was 48 last time, 44 the time before that. I need to play this more, especially with the expansion. We have the Cats and Dogs, Dogs expansion. And finally, number 91, it was new on the list last time at 35. Was on the list before. Manage, again, I, all these, I'm just like, I want to play this more. Uh, this is Kitara. Kitara is a game where you are moving your dudes around the map. It's like this fantasy Africa setting, which is very cool. You've got these, like, cheetah centaurs here, um, which are pieces in the game. Very weird and interesting. Um, and so you're just moving guys around the board, conquering territories, trying to get points. But the way you do that is by drafting these cards uh, from a central reserve, and then you do everything that's on your card. So you're kind of building out your little tableau. Um, and so there's different ways to approach the game. You can you know, try and get points in one way or get points in conquest or other things like that. Uh, you can really go heavy into the cheetah centaurs. You can go heavy into these guys on the musk oxes. And yeah, very cool. Um, area control, a lot of attacking, but practically no casualties, which is very interesting. Um, just you're, you attack a bunch, your opponent has to retreat. And then they attack a bunch and they have to retreat. Um, yeah. Man, I got to play this game more. Mary Ann might like, might like this game. Mary Ann, we're going to try this one. Trust me, it's better than Super Mega Lucky Box. Super Mega Lucky Box. The number game. Um, anyway, that was number 91. That's uh, 100 through 91. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm glad I got to like show all these. That's fun, even though I don't own Clank Catacombs. Um, there will be some games on the list I don't own, but none in this top 10. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. Bye.